In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to implement a large smoke area using two flexi-smoke panels and the master-slave relation between the two smoke zones. Here I have the two panels that I'm going to use. All the peripherals are pre-installed and each panel is already configured with one smoke zone. Panel 1 has the following peripherals connected. One actuator, one brake glass unit, a manual override switch, a fire alarm module and a rain sensor. Panel 2 has connected one actuator, one brake glass unit, and one manual override switch. In panel one, smoke zone one is configured. If I press the alarm button on the brake glass unit, we can see that the actuator is opening. I press reset and it closes. I can also give the command to open from the manual override switch. The actuator is opening. If I activate the rain sensor by creating humidity with my hand, the actuator will close. In panel 2, I've installed and configured the Smoke Zone 2. I can test that it's working by pressing the alarm button on the brake glass unit. The actuator of Zone 2 will open. I press Reset to close. I can also use the manual override switch to control the actuator. We've seen that we have two independent smoke zones that are in perfect working condition. Next, I'll show you how to connect them together and create a master-slave configuration between the two. Master-slave means that the two panels are working together as one large smoke area. The master-slave configuration is done through the CAN bus cable that connects the two panels. I've connected this cable on S2X2 on the panel 1. We can have one independent cable for the connection or two cables for redundancy purposes. In this case, we're only using one cable. After connecting the CAN bus cable, we need to make sure that micro switches for the end cable module are switched on in the first and the last devices on the CAN bus. The switches are located here on the back plate. I've turned them on, on both the master and slave, because we only have two panels. Next, I start the configuration. The first thing to do is to assign CAN bus IDs to the panels. I do it first on the master panel. From the configuration menu, I select CAN and I'll insert an ID. I select 1. The default CAN bus mode is parallel bus, which I need to change because I've only connected the panels with one cable. I'll do the same in the configuration of the panel 2, the slave panel. I'll give a CAN ID 2 to panel 2 and change the bus mode configuration from parallel bus to independent buses. We go back to panel 1. I'll now configure the smoke zone to be a master. From the configuration menu, I select smoke zone, smoke zone 1. I'll now configure the smoke zone to be a master. 
I can define four different slaves to each of the smoke zones. In this case, I chose to select Slave 1. I know that the CAN ID in the Slave panel is 2, so I select 2. The smoke zone implemented in panel 2 is Smoke Zone 2, so I select 2 again. I've now defined that the slave of this panel is CAN ID 2, Smoke Zone 2. Now I want to check that this configuration was communicated to the panel 2. In the View All Details menu in the sub-menu of Smoke Zone 2, we can see that the master of this smoke zone is CAN ID 1, Smoke Zone 1. Now that the master slave configuration is ready, let's check that everything is working accordingly. If I activate one of the zones, the other one will react in the same way and at the same time. I activate the fire alarm by pressing the red button on the brake glass unit connected to Zone 1. Both actuators react and open, and the red LEDs on both brake glass units are on. If I press Reset on the brake glass unit of the second zone, we see that both zones are reacting, the actuators are closing, and everything is going back to normal operation. If I activate the signal from the fire alarm on Smoke Zone 1, the two zones are reacting. If I disconnect the signal, the actuators are closing and everything returns to normal operation. Testing the manual override switch. If I press the Open button on the switch in Smoke Zone 1, we see that both actuators are reacting and open. If I press the Stop on the manual switch in the Smoke Zone 2, both actuators stop. Also, when activating the rain sensor, both actuators will react and close. As you can see, the two panels are working as one large smoke area.